it used to be. Uh, Tough times economically for the church in the last 20 years, or...? Yeah, I think so, because I think that, you know, I mean, one way of looking at it is probably that since the 1980s, probably there, there's been a growing perception on the part of some people that there's reason to be skeptical about the legitimacy of the church. And I think that's probably meant less, uh, less money flowing in you know, where 30 years ago there just would have been a kind of automatic, uh, you know, flow from tithe. I think as people have become suspicious of uh, the church, uh, or at least skeptical about uh, what they perceive as exaggerated claims, uh, the tendency is probably to have to, to dry up. Uh, plus, of course, I think in North America, as elsewhere in the world, you know, the growth of membership among members of the apocalyptic sect is often among people of the economic margins who are not uh, able to contribute as much. And by contrast, the folks who have done well economically are often those who are hitting out the other side of the revolving door. Uh, you know, How many Adventists worldwide? 20 million? 14? I doubt there are, tw there are 20. I mean, I don't... Uh, there could be could be close to 20, but... Uh, they used to double every 20 years, the church. I yeah, remember. and I think there's still tremendous growth in uh, Latin America and in Africa, and uh, certainly the numbers are increasing quite dramatically. Um, but I think... Let's know, keep working. Yeah. The, the numbers are declining in Europe, and they're pretty much stable in North America. I think the reason they're stable in North America... Um, is because, you know, there is enough of a, a population that there, you know, there are people who are, uh, you know, remaining in the community because uh, of their, uh, you know, their family and other roots there. And then there are, of course, lots of new additions, I think, particularly among, uh, among Hispanics. Uh, so, what a... Remember uh, the Tutsis versus Hutus yeah. in Rwanda? Yeah. I read a book about that, and I was shocked to see that among the among leading members of the side that was doing slaughtering were Seventh Day Adventist pastor. And but did that get much talk? In the um, it certainly got discussed in the Adventist Independent Press. I don't know that it uh, how much attention it got in the, the kind of official uh, church uh, church press. But absolutely in the Independent Press, it was. Bit of a shocker, you know, that been his foster well, yeah. like right in the center of a genocide. No, I absolutely. <laughs> like, and, whoa! Know, and of course, I, I don't know whether, uh, when the, the book was that you, you, you um, read, was it the Gurevich book? Uh, yes, yes, know? yes. And I think it was probably after that 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 guy, you know, ended up standing trial over here uh, uh, under, you know, I'm not sure what, some international human rights right, statute right. that we incorporate into national law. He stood trial in Texas, I think, along with his son. And I don't yes. know what, I don't know what finally became of that trial yeah it's like even even you know adventism can't completely remake the, the bloodthirsty you know tribal genocidal urge no and i guess it's <laughs> nothing you know, nothing is foolproof from these you know very primitive uh yeah genocidal urges yeah, and kind of what the role of religion was in all of that. I don't, you know, I don't think I understand that story well enough to know, you know, whether there's any way in which Adventism contributed to that. Adventism generally has a negative view on genocide, right? Yeah, yeah, it's not a... It's not a pro-genocide... No, no. uh, right, it's, you know, I mean, I think as, <laughs> I think as, as uh, social practices go, genocide's probably one of the ones that tends to be frowned on. Yes. Uh, <laughs> No, it's not quite out there with smoking, but... Right. I mean, you know, but, you know, understand. You understand, I mean, yes. You know, we, have, we have to have our priorities. Yes. Um, and, I, you know, I mean, uh, it is certainly the case that Adventism has often had... Well, it's had two kinds of political histories, it seems to me. It's had a history sometimes uh, in places like Peru of being associated with fairly aggressive agitation for social change in quite a positive direction because there uh, the idea was of course that you know a, a Catholic majority tended to uh, want a particularly Catholic elite tended to want to shut down mm -hmm. Protestant interlopers and so the Protestant missionaries ended up uh, uh, supporting efforts on behalf of uh, 
Peruvian Highland Indians for uh, you know, increased participation in societal life and really contributed in a way that's been lauded by a lot of folks outside the Adventist community. On the other hand, there are a number of other uh, environments in which Adventism has uh, fairly embarrassingly allied itself with some, some unpleasant people um, who, you know, have, you know, whether it's just that they had Adventist doctors they liked or whether they wanted to uh, create a counterweight to the Catholic Church or whatever else, uh, you know, in places like the Dominican Republic, Rafael Trujillo, I think, had a, oh. had a chummy relationship with, with some oh. Adventists and Ferdinand Marcos and so forth. I mean, not, <laughs> not you know, some of the, right. the finest people uh, in the world's political history. So, What's this, Anglin Hall? Anglin Hall. Anglin Hall. This is, uh, this is uh, a women's dormitory, and I, I'm not sure that this story is accurate, but the story, in any event, is that it is, a women's, that it is called Anglin Hall. Uh, because uh, at a point when, probably at a point when the boards were of uh, Los Angeles and Loma Linda were largely identical as they still are to, to great an extent, I think, um, there was some kind of, there were political shenanigans of some kind that allowed money to be snagged from PUC uh, to be brought here. And I think uh -huh. this was some, somebody's idea of a joke to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to uh, call it Anglin Hall and honor it, you know, in honor of that. Uh, so, you know, we can build a dorm with this 10,000 that we sneaked away from the UC. And, uh, uh, that may be false, but that's, that's the story. Right? Uh, this is also a uh, dormitory. This is um, uh, Gladwin Hall, which... Oh, that's familiar. Which is a, a, that name? A, a, now a dorm for graduate students. Ah. Huh. Now, when does the school year begin? Uh, two weeks. Two weeks, okay. How you doing? Good to see you. Keep, keep well. Awesome. Students from all over the world. So, 90% are American, or? No, I would think, when, when I was a student, 90% weren't American. I would guess 75% were. Uh, with the remaining 20 percent, 25 percent from all over, I would guess that number is probably higher now. Uh, so I see some people on uh, message boards related to my dad's talk calling Adventism a third world religion. That's because the growth in numbers is yes. now from the third world. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's, as I say, it's stable here, declining in Europe and right. ballooning in the, in the third world. This way. The Visual Arts Center that I showed you earlier mm -hmm. opened in the fall of 1984 when I was a student, and uh, there was very little new construction, just the addition of a uh, 3,000 square feet or so to the School of Education building over the course of the next two decades. And then finally, after it's having been promised for 30 years or so, we got uh, a new uh, a new science building, and uh, that's obviously been important because uh, so many students here are headed toward uh, work in the health professions, and uh, so uh, science matters a lot. So uh, while the old science building is still home uh, to the chemistry department, uh, the new science building houses biology and mathematics. Uh, it's right in front of us, and it's a very attractive space. What's the smog like out here? Is it better or worse? Oh, when it's hot, it's pretty bad. Yeah. Because we're in a, in a valley, and yeah. so it collects the mountains. Yeah. I don't... I'm quite sure we're not going to be able to get in there, which is too bad, because it is really a, a lovely building. Uh, you know, very, uh, very attractive. Have you ever 